Are they there? They're there. Yep. Everything's good. Right. I think we brought my I just need to be oh, like yeah. walking out the building by six o'clock today. I know that's what happens when people have events and galas. Yeah, yeah. Blah 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 blah. Is it working? Yeah. Blah 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 blah. It's not working. It's not working. That's we great. tested it earlier. Oh, okay. I mean, I can kind of hear it. That's not working. Kind of doesn't do it for me. No. Kind of. Who is the other guy's Yeah. Hello, hello. Yeah, no, it's not working. What happened when we did the test? It, it works. I wonder if it when they pulled the sound up. Yeah, the mic too. We'll just start. Cause sure. We're just going to start because i got to be out of here. We're going to start because i got to go to a thingy at... Ah, yay! i got to go to a thingy at a thingy, thingy, thingy. So i have to run out of here. Um, but, uh... Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. We're, we're watch me work. Here we are. Which is is one of the things we have to start making. Uh, if you haven't already, you know, you start you make a list of the, the work that you have to do. If we didn't learn the lesson the easier way, we're gonna learn it the hard way, baby. We're gonna learn it the hard way. So you make a list of things that you have to that you have to do, and one of them is um, show up. You have to show up, you know, so um, I, I have a friend, uh, I don't get on Facebook, but I had a friend who's on Facebook and people were saying who they voted for and one of his friends said, let the unfriending begin. Um, so if you, if you didn't vote, too bad for you. And if you voted for, you know, anyone that, who's unqualified, too bad. But the point is, is that from here out, you got to, you know, um, someone was asking me, well, what do we do? Do we, we let's do theater in all these towns. And, you know, they were, they'd seen my play uptown. And they said, let's do theater. And let's take this show on the road. And, you know, what we can do, though, is know that you can take your play everywhere you go. The play of you. You know what I mean? You know what I mean, Chris Farley? Yeah, the play of you, right? The play of like the world is wonderful and inclusive. That play, you know, it doesn't ha it doesn't have to be elaborate. It just has to be something. Um, so so you can take that play, and it's it's inexpensive and it's it's, it's easy to put on. You put it on all the time, like right now. And this is why this is a play and not like just a writing class. It's a show. We are showing up and we are showing you how to be, a one way to be anyway. So, okay. Yeah, Paris, right? I'm memorizing, I'm, I'm on a quest to memorize some names here. So, um, awesome. So, uh, our mic, our mic doesn't work, whatever. Okay, whatever, but we're gonna keep going, we're gonna get started. So, anybody not know how Watch Me Work works? Okay. You don't know how to work. Okay, so Watch Your Work is a play. It's also a free writing class. Okay, so it's free. So if anybody like asked you for money, <laughs> they're not affiliated with us. Okay, so um, this is what we do. We I set the timer for 20 minutes. We work together for 20 minutes. That's the action part of the play. All right, and that we create the action of the play together. And then after 20 minutes, my timer will go off we'll create the dialogue together. And the dialogue of the play will be us in conversation, like dialogue, um, in dialogue about your work and your creative process. So, and everybody can, everybody knows this already has been here. If you ask me about my work, I'll make it better. Okay? So, and that's basically it. So, if you have questions about your work and your creative process, that's what we're here to talk about. Um, you know. Yeah, so we're gonna just we're gonna start and we'll do that. Hopefully the mic will be working. Okay, ready? Um, um do it after, we're going.
Yeah. Uh, that's nice. Okay, right, so Melissa, yes, yeah, you quickly tell us. Um, so thank you for joining us at HowlRound. Um, if you want to tweet us at any point to ask um, SLP any questions that you have, um, tweet us at WatchMeWorkSLP and then make sure to hashtag HowlRound. So that's H-O-W-L-R-O-U-N-D. All right, cool. Yay. All right, well done. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Okay, so Yodua, anybody have any questions about their work, their creative process? Oh, you guys are here. Hi. I just, these are people from my past. And it's fitting that they're like behind me. <laughs> we're never far away. And I'm always happy to see you guys. Yeah. They're, pot, they're like a gang. They wear leather jackets and they have motorcycles and switchblades. Like. <laughs> Except for you with the switch, but yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any uh, any answer? Any like? No? Yeah, Carol. It's been such a rough kind of uh, week with the election and stuff, but it's so amazing to me how it can go from disappointment and anger and all those things and to healing in creativity. Right. I've, I've met so many people this week who said I've, I've written a poem, um, I've written a song, I've written a this. It, it's like a, it's like we need to express our feelings and creativity is the way to do it. Right. It's, it's one of the ways. It's one of the ways, the ways to do it. Yeah. I mean, Carol says it's, it's it's so interesting how we can go from disappointment to healing, and creativity is often the way to do that. Um, and, and you're right. I mean, there were also some folks. Uh, guess it. Guess it was Wednesday um, in Washington Square Park, doing a, a love rally, which was pretty cool. You know, that was cool. They were, and they, I think people were kind of protesting all over the, the world. It's funny, you know, when, when your relatives from Germany call you and go, "You can always come over." Yeah, it's, it's like, whoa, <laughs> you know, the journey's looking good, right? We know how far we've come. Um, I mean, actually, I love, I love Germany, but, you know, it's, it, it's ironic that they're offering, you know, they're saying, hey, you can always come live over here in Germany. They're offering asylum. They are, they're offering asylum, and which America, you know, Angela Merkel is, is, you know, kind of righteous, so. Anyway, so, uh, you know, and we find things to laugh at, and we, we recall that, that uh, we recall that you know days have often been difficult, and and I think you know those of you is anyone anyone here consider themselves a, a millennial or millennial? So I mean it's funny, right? It's funny, but because people are always like, oh the millennials, so like like six months ago the millennials, they're not doing anything, they're lazy, they're navel gazing. Now y'all got a job. Got a, you might not pay anything, <laughs> but you definitely got a job. So, you know, you got a job to do. Um, there are 3,000 of them at the Japanese. There you go. So, yeah, so you, you guys got to, you, uh, you know, uh, if you don't, if you didn't feel like you had any purpose, um, you just wait to get your own reality TV show or whatever the shit you're hoping for. You know, there's a real calling now. That, uh, what? Oh, you know, I mean, come on, you can always look back into your own past. Now, maybe not your own particular re past, but the past of your foremothers and forefathers and know that, you know, yeah, welcome to the club called the human experience. Sometimes things get shitty. Here we are. Yeah, yeah. Let's so we have a different, we have a perspective of uh, how we thought then. Nothing will ever be the same. And it won't. And it won't. It would be and different, it but Things it won't. will never be the same. But it heals. Uh, yeah. Okay. Hey, Lori. <laughs> Have a blessed, perfect day. Fabulous, Lori. This is like the best place to sit. People come by. <laughs> anyway. So anybody have a question about their work, their creative process? Anybody working on anything? Stacy? Yeah. I think my question is more about 
after getting out of the busy period of not creating, but kind of just working, I, I'm, I'm, finding it, yeah, I'm finding it hard to mentally settle back in to write. And I'm trying to steal that time, like I'm trying to take that little bit of time a day, and sometimes I don't get to get that little bit of time. And when I get it, like, I had a whole day where I ran around, like, okay, when I finally get at home at night, I'm going to write, and all I can do is just a base plan. So it was just like, I, but I want to, like, I, I need to create, but I just don't, my head is not here. Well, yeah, so, so did everybody here, so Stacy said, so after coming out of a very, very, very busy time, um, we weren't creating, you said it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so she wasn't getting work done. Now she really thinks, wow, 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 now I really need to get some work done now. And it's really hard um, because every time I sit down and I have a little bit of time, I, I don't get the work done. I, I'm having trouble getting the focus back, you know, or just maybe you're just exhausted and need a little bit of a rest. Yeah, I mean, you might just need a look. Yeah, so take the time. And again, do it in, in small increments. So sometimes we think, yeah, 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 great. I've been, I've been doing this really intense job, and now I have a, a week or a, a whole day. I'm going to spend the whole day writing. You know, we know what that's like. All of us, yeah, people are like that. Like, oh, yeah, I've been there. You know, we think, great, I'm going to spend the whole day, and then you don't do anything, and you feel like shit. Instead, why don't you spend, you say, I'm going to spend five minutes of my day right in. You can do five minutes, right? I can do five. You can do five. Right. And so we, we set ourselves a task that's manageable. Instead of you know, set yourself a little task. And say great. So for the next I mean what? A week, why don't you just do five minutes a day? Yeah. You know? Yeah, I'm trying to that 45 and the 45 is not going Yeah, yeah, right. So aim for five. And five doesn't work when we've said this. We lower the bar. That's how we get all the work done. Lower the bar. Lower the bar. Oh, this low. Oh, look how low it is. And so if 45 doesn't work, right, we do 20. If 20 is too much, we do 10 or five or three or one minute. Uh, my son, you know, guys know. So he's learning how to play the violin, right? So part of his lesson is to stand still. He's five. So we stand still while we play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. And he stands there, and I play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and he stands still for like two minutes. But that's his violin practice for the day, two minutes. That's all we do. Good, good job. All right. Next thing we want to do, you know? So give yourself two minutes. And think of Durham, I'll bring in a videotape of him standing. <laughs> While I play Twinkle Twinkle Little Star really horrifically on the violin. And he's like, so, okay? So, lower the bar. Lower, lower, lower. If, if, you, if you find that you're unable to do something, lower it to a place that you, is manageable. Okay? Okay. Anybody else? Like what is it? Focus. Focus. Yes. I know I say that a lot. Um, Durham says that. What do you mean, focus? What do I mean? What do I mean when I say focus? Yes, and how to get to that, you know. Focus? Yeah. Focus. Um, yeah, let's see. Maybe, okay, so um, when I say focus, does that, does that make any sense to anybody? Focus, you know, so. Okay, so for example, if. There are a couple of things we can do. If you're having difficulty focusing, you have a lot of chatter in your mind, this is great to work here. There's usually always noise down here. And I have, I'm always have two minds. One mind says, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go lean my head over and I'm going to fuck up. <laughs> and then the other part of my mind goes, ha, ah, what a learning opportunity. I can practice being attentive to my work while there are distractions or while there are other people in the world. Hello. Right? Okay? So this is
is what we do. So we, but there's certain things that we can do. One, again, the timer is a really good focusing tool. This is why we use it. It's not just to mark off the time because looking at a clock on the wall could do that for you. But this is a focusing tool, actually, and I like these because it's digital, it's visible, and it's only a timer. This does not check me in with what's going on on Slate. You know what I'm saying? I can't read up on you know who doing you know what. It's not going to give me the answers to those questions. It's only going to tell me how many minutes and seconds I have to go in my writing process, which is great. And this, so this is this thing is focused. It's only doing one thing. That's it. Yay! So you surround yourself with a few focused things, right? You maybe sit in front of your computer. You might turn off the thing that gets you to the newsfeed or whatever, right? So you're focusing, so you're turning, you're shutting down some of the distractions. You might wear, I have these, I didn't put them on today, earplugs. The blue ones are the heavy duty ones. So I have two kinds of them, okay? So you do things that are gonna help you. And that, that's basically, and then you just say, I'm going to write for, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, five minutes, whatever. That's basically, it, it's a, it, it's used as a, it's a verb, it's a thing you do. Like, you what? know, writing, uh, then you can write for 20 or 30 minutes, but then focusing on what you want to write. I mean, the babble, you can write babble for 25, 30 minutes. But you can write the what? Babble. The, ba the babble? Yeah. The, the babble. blah blah. The blah blah. Yes, but to focus on task at hand, the play that you're writing, the story you want to tell. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, well that's, well, that, but that's, that's, I think what you do is you sit down and you, it's like this, if you're, you're going to, why don't you talk, talk to Carol, just talk to her. There you go, see, you focused on me, right? Go talk to Carol again. Choices, right? And that's a, a strength, that's a muscle that you're working on. Right? I'm looking at you, Ryan. I am looking at you, because I know you. You seem more grounded, though. Are you wearing heavier shoes? Or? <laughs> yeah, it's heavier, yeah, it's heavier. It's heavier. It's no longer hair. Yeah, and I can kind of like, right? It's like, you know. Yeah. Good. It's good. Okay, stay, stay down. Stay down here with us. It's fun. Um, but does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yeah. See, that's basically what it is. You have voices in your head that are trying to distract you constantly, right? And sometimes they're important voices. Like your kid might be calling you, like, Mommy, Mommy, Mommy. My kid doesn't. Mommy, 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 Mommy. I look up and I say, Mommy is writing. And he knows what that means. You know? You know, okay, cool. I'll play with my Lego. Okay, so that's because we have a one-room apartment. When I write at home, my son is running around in circles in the living room. So I have to sort of help him help me focus by asking him to help me with my space. Yeah. That makes sense? Okay. And it's okay if you veer off the path a little bit, if you turn to that voice and listen. Okay, it's okay. It's all right. Be gentle with yourself. Come back to the task of him. feels like 
timeless in itself, it doesn't feel very timely considering. And then like something I was writing to just get my juices flowing right now, it was like, oh, this feels timely and timeless, but it's not what I want to do right now. So what do you think my responsibility is to now as an artist? What do I think your, I mean, everybody kind of here, you know, what do you think, what, what is, what is, what do I think your responsibility is now to, what do you think your responsibility is now? What do I think your responsibility is now? It's like right. I already feel inspired to do that. Right. Um, but yeah, so like, like, do I have a responsibility? Like what we were just talking about with millennials, in my uh, as much as in my actions, in my art, to do that, even if that's not the project I'm working on right now. I think you. Know, I think now more than ever, we have a responsibility to be true to ourselves. Right. If you are true, I mean, this is in my experience. This is how it works, and this is just me talking. Um, in my experience, when I am very true to myself and tell the story, write the play, the novel, the movie, whatever, that I want to write, that I think is important, then for some weird kind of crazy reason, it ends up being important to a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of people. Like Last Black Man. And I never tell people to go see my own show. We opened Death of the Last Black Man in the whole entire world, aka The Eagle from the Dead, last night of its signature. People came out of the theater overjoyed, not because it's a happy play, but because they felt, wow, okay, I wrote the play 26 years ago. I wrote it because it was important to me. And it, 26 years later, it's important to a lot, a lot of people who weren't even born when I wrote the play. So I say, now more than ever, you need to take care of yourself. Now more than ever. And if you take care of yourself thoroughly, and if you know inside that yourself is just another way of saying everybody, right? Yourself, you are the gateway to everybody. You experience the world through yourself, right? So if you take care of Alexis and you finish one of those projects and you just told me, oh, I'm writing something and then I jump on something else, that's your MO sister. You write something, get it done. Take care of yourself, make it as good as you possibly can, and in that way you will best serve the world. In my experience, that's how it works. Right? Okay? So do your thing. Emerson said, do your thing so that I may know you. Do your thing, everybody, do your thing. Now more than ever. Don't be trying to do somebody else's thing. <laughs> okay? Don't be doing your mom's thing or your dad's thing, your auntie's thing or something other. Do your thing. It's important that you do your thing. Right? And somehow what the way that works is you will then be serving humanity in a huge way, in a way that you cannot imagine. In my experience, that's how it works. So, okay? Good question though. Yes, so who? Brett. Yes. This is my mission. I have a modest mission. It's to just memorize everybody. Gotta set the low bar. <laughs> well, Brett. I mean, no, no, that's very high. No, but I mean, like, a modest, you know, never mind. Anyway, um, based on, obviously, in light of recent events, uh, do you have recommendations on how, whether it's things that you do in your daily practice or sort of how to maintain the feelings that things like that give the things sort of like what yeah, your work or the, no, the politics like of the day re, the politics of the day or what, whatever might be sort of an inspiring or galvanizing thing um, in terms of maintaining because it feels like too often mm -hmm. there are a million th sort of big things that happen and everybody in their sort of groundswell of of art or creativity or sort of an, uh, a lack of inhibition right. and then inevitably that goes away and then we're right back where we started from and then things repeat themselves. Right. So if there are any sort of words you can offer or, or things that you do in your daily practice. How to practice, keep it going. Yeah. How to keep the, the feeling of like, well, how would you, 
talk about the feeling that you're feeling? Is this what you used to say? Uh, I, I think something that I personally struggle with, that I don't know about anybody else, but I uh, censor myself a lot. I, I, so we can oh, hear you. Um, I have to censor myself a lot when I make censor. things. Uh, Brett says, I censor myself a lot when I make things. And recently I've been feeling a lot of a lot more freedom and a lot less necessity in censoring things. And I feel like part of it is because I'm like, well, who knows what's going to happen. There's only a certain amount of time left. So, uh, in that sense, it's, <laughs> got, it's like, Right, so, so the election, it, it was good for you. Uh, in some, I guess. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> No, but you really, yeah, this is what you have to do. You have to say, okay, you can either, you know, say, oh, only horrible things about it. You can say, what am I grateful for today? I'm grateful for this feeling of maybe I won't censor myself so much because, you know, it's like the time is now, you know? So that's good. So you have to remind yourself of what you're grateful for. I think that's a good thing to do. Um, I think you have to allow yourself some slippage, you know? You might have a whole day to write, and you might not. It's okay. I think you, we should in, endeavor to be kind and considerate to every single person we meet. I keep saying this over and over every week. Every single person, not just your writing teacher, not just your bank clerk, you know, who's in charge of giving you money or whatever. Every single person. Can you do it? I don't know. It'd be cool. Every single, like, like, you know, the clerk in the grocery store, the every single person that you meet. Can you do it? I don't know. Interesting. Those kinds of things. Set yourself some challenges like that. Eat better. I don't know how you eat, but you know what I'm saying? <laughs> eat better. You know what I mean? If you go home and you have like 10 beers, maybe you only have five. Yo. You know what I'm saying? I mean, cut back a little bit and do some self-nurturing. Like I'm starting to take care of yourself. You know? So you'll be of better service to the world. Volunteer for something. Do something for free for somebody. You know? There are a million things. You know what they are. The angles of your head, Chris. I'll study. Anybody else? Yeah, man. What's your name? Jared. Hey, Jared. Hi. You actually use a typewriter in your process, or is that a problem? Yeah, yeah, this is my process, and this is a typewriter. You know, it's, it's a, it's a it, good question. It's a prop, but also it's the real thing. Because, you know, as the man said, all the world's a stage, Joe. You know? <laughs> I think you should have put a no after that. Yeah. All the world's a stage, Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't anyway, think that so, was yeah. it. So, thank you. And that's what I used to do. Oh. <laughs> actually, right on um, yeah. All right, so I have a, a two-part question. Yes. All right. First, have you ever written anything that has scared the life out of you to, to write? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, um, have I ever written anything? <laughs> yeah. Scared? Have you ever written anything that scares the life out of you to write? I'm in the process of writing something right now. It's really, really scary. It's a, it's a one-man show, and it's it's taken me. It's taken me a very long time to write because I'm usually I can usually write pretty quickly. Right. But this one has been for like six or seven years. It's about my life growing up oh, wow. with my mother who who, oh, wow. who abused me. Oh. And it's like oh, yeah. it's extremely scary to write. But I know like right now I have to I have to do it. Right. It's, it's therapeutic. Oh, wow. So I was go going to ask if you have ever written anything and how long did it take you? It was like really really because it's. I'm so scared, but I know I have to do it. Right. I have to get this out of me. Right, and that's, I mean, yeah, some things are quick to write, they come quickly, and some things come more slowly. Um, for me, it's just because I just think, like, oh, it's just, like, not you know, there yet, really, you know. And I think the spirit is gentle, and you're showing up every day, you're writing every day, and the spirit is giving you just enough, you know, you can, oh, Paris can bear this a little bit today, yeah. so we'll just do that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's sort of a gentle, gentle, plodding forward kind of thing. Um, and you know you have to keep going. So it's not a question of whether you're going to turn back or not. It's just a question of, like what? Like, when am I going to be done writing this? Well, 
Yeah, sort of. I mean, it, it's taken me so long, and it's when I first started, it scared me so much. I was like, oh, I can't, I can't do this right, right, right now. Right. This was years ago, but now I'm at a place where I'm like, okay, I have to get this out. Right. Because if right. I don't do it now, I would never do it. Probably. Right. So, do you have um, any other projects that you're working on simultaneously? I, I am, I am, yes. Okay, so that, but that's sometimes helpful. But if one project is like really, really hard, you know, for whatever reasons, it's a personal story that's hard, it's, you know, complicated technically or whatever, you have to do a lot of research to figure it out. Sometimes it's good to have a different project, maybe even in another media, maybe if you play music, you, you can write some songs, or do something that's just way different, and do that and sort of take joy, so it's like, you can have a little holiday time, okay. you know, and then you go into the deep, you know, and then have a little fun thing, and then back and forth as you move forward. It might make it just a little easier, you know. But congratulations for being so great. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I know. Right on, huh? Well done. Good job. Anybody else? Yes. Can you remind me of your name? Oh, I'm Christine. Christine. Hey, Christine. Um, you mentioned research. I'm wondering how research fits into your writing process, whether it's something you try and do all up front, or if it happens more piecemeal, or if you don't do any research and you write first right. and then you do the research. Right. Christine's asking about research and how we should do research. Uh, it's about you. So how does research work for you? Do you have a project that you're working on and you wonder, should I do all the research up front? Should I do it piecemeal? Um, well, I, I work in documentary, so my experience is right. doing a lot of research up front. Right. But I'm wondering if that's the right pro approach to take for writing, because I'm finding myself just doing endless research. Right. So if you find yourself doing endless research, and you have a, and you're asking this question, and you probably have a feeling like you'd rather be writing. <laughs> I know everybody's laughing. Ha ha. Go ahead and write. You can always double back and do a little research. You can always put a post-it in your play or your novel or whatever you're writing and go look up the so-and-so or this and that later. You know what I mean? You can always go back and rewrite and organize it. Um, so if you're feeling like you ought to be writing now, go ahead and start. You know, go ahead and start and see how you feel. Makes sense. Yeah, yeah Siobhan. You said well, you talked once about um, when rewriting using index cards, but I forgot what it was. <laughs> Card. And so you look at the cards, like once you have them all compiled, then determine if things fit, if things no longer fit, and whether or not things need to be moved around. Right. So this is now remember. So Siobhan, if you've had a whole, if you have a whole draft of your play and you're looking to do a rewrite, okay, instead of combing through word by word of your script, for example, we're talking about a play or a screenplay or whatever, right? You can just do little snapshots of the scenes on index cards and get a, a, a snapshot of your screenplay, for example, that way, okay? And then you can sort of say, okay, scene one, this happened, scene two, this happened, scene three, what's the main event in this scene? I don't know, but they're talking a lot. Scene four, this and this happened, oh, but that's a lot. Scene five, okay, and then you sort of can organize them and do a rewrite that way, and then go back and do a rewrite with the actual dialogue and all the specifics and trimmings and all that. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. You're welcome. welcome back into the game. No, 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 it's a great question. Anybody else? We have five. We have five. Yes? Yeah, man. What's your name? Marcus. 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 Hey, Marcus. Hey. Um, okay, so my question is, what is a, a, a tip or two about creating a synopsis for the work? So you have a word that you've written, mm -hmm. and you want to, and now you need to create a synopsis. Yes. Okay. Well, so, 
imagine, I mean, this is, I mean, you've heard this one before, right? So imagine that you were in an elevator. You know, you've heard the elevator pitch, right? Imagine that you were in an elevator with someone that you really wanted to tell us. Like, who's your, are you a director, a writer? Or a, writer. Okay, so who would be your ideal director? My ideal director? Yeah. Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino, fantastic. So you're just, you just happen to be minding your own business, you know, right now, and we'll give you a big, you know, like a Freedom Tower. Oh, oh, oh. And it's a most elevator, right? And for some reason, there's some kid that pushed all the buttons. There was no one in the elevator but you and Quentin. And you're like, wow, this is my moment. I have, like, a minute to tell Mr. Tarantino about my fabulous project. Imagine that scene for yourself. What's the now? Imagine what it would be like and what you would say. You see what I'm saying? You don't don't tell us now, but as you imagine it and write that down. This is the story that you want. Man, I got this script. It, you'd be a great director for it. Oh, what's the story? Boom. One minute. Well, it's about this, huh? And more than anything, they're gonna try to be doing, huh? Except the, <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> then that happens, and then what? <laughs> and then there's a anyway, and the end, we all go plop. Man, it's amazing, like that. And you just fill in the blanks like that. But just imagine you're in the presence of someone you deeply admire that you really want to work with. I guess the challenge is yeah. not, not giving a story. I write poetry mostly. Okay. So it's like, I don't want to tell why I'm writing the poem. I don't want to talk about it. I want, to, I want you to get there. Right. But uh, I just want to pack it. Right, 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 right. You don't have to go into the why. Okay. You don't have to go into the, I, well, you know, I, well, Quentin, man, I mean, can I call you Quentin? Yeah, cool. Well, I, you know, I started writing this story <laughs> because, you know, I grew up on a farm and, in Virginia, and there were a lot of sheep, you know? I mean, right, and then you're, you're already, it's over. He doesn't care why you started writing it. Save that for your interview on Entertainment Tonight or whatever. You know, talk about... Pitch the story, you know what I mean? You want him to tell him the story. Or imagine you have a, like a five-year-old. Do you have a five-year-old? Okay, well, uh, did we, so you know. So, once upon a time, right? And then, and you have to be excited. And uh, no, full body listening. Are you, are you with me, are you with me? Uh, yeah, and then, uh, like that. And then they're like, yeah, they're like, yeah, okay, 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 like that. You've taught five-year-olds, so you know how to pitch to a Hollywood director. <laughs> well, I mean, that was like, that's honest. Anybody else? How are you doing, CA? Yeah? You're hanging in there, sister. All right. It's good to see you. Good. Ryan, you good? Yeah. Yeah. You know, we're together. We're hanging out. We're laughing. We're still smiling. There are people who endure, we endure. You know, we keep on keeping on. That's, you know, you, you hear these, these, you see these black and white movies about like the civil rights movement and shit. Yeah, look at them. Oh well, shit, what were they talking about? <laughs> you know, ain't nobody gonna turn us around. What were they talking about? Yeah, they were talking about stuff like this. You know, and you think, huh, well, you know, you know, we're not alone. If, we, if it was like, if, 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 I mean, Hillary won the popular vote, number one. Okay, and number two, if you were the only one who voted for her, right, then it would kind of be a, a bummer. <laughs> but if you voted for her, you weren't the only one. And that's all, you know. You were in the majority, in fact. There you go, see? And I haven't been in the majority in a long time. <laughs> I'm sorry about being in the majority. You know what I mean? Um, you know, but, uh, but you know, there's just a lot, of, there's a lot of work to be done. We might as well. You know, so take care of yourself. Eat your vitamins. You know. Do your, it's, it's not, it's, 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 it's you guys are pointing. You're just pointing something. It's 6 o'clock. It's 6 o'clock and I have to go somewhere. Yeah, so um, we love you. We'll see you next week when we be back. We'll be back next week. Bye.
guys are great. Come on. <laughs> you guys are great. This is like perfect. And we're going to do it next week.